Last month, we built a 12-core AMD Ryzen Hackintosh that was originally intended to compete with the Mac Pro at less than half the cost. Uh, we failed big time because that machine didn't just compete with the Mac Pro at less than half the cost, it outperformed it by nearly 40%, which is mind blowing when you think about it. What we didn't tell you is that that machine was never intended to be a long-term use Hackintosh and that we were going to be soon wiping the drive and installing Windows because my cinematographer, Derek, uses Windows and DaVinci Resolve. Look, I'm a Mac guy, but at the end of the day, I don't really care. I'm a businessman and I want people to be on the operating system that they're comfortable with, that they feel is the most quick. And since we did that, everything's been great. And uh, I mean, look at the, com wait, no, where's the computer? Oh, that's right, it sucks. Okay, I gotta cut Windows some slack. While it shares some of the blame, it's not entirely the operating system's fault. You see, we had a bit of a hardware failure. I bought two used Vega 64 GPUs on eBay and I'm pretty sure one of them had been used for Bitcoin mining because as soon as we built the system, we started having graphics errors on one of the cards. And unfortunately, because we unwisely built the computer around a hardline liquid cooling design, it wasn't very easy to take apart. And the BIOS on my motherboard did not allow me to disable one of the PCIe slots, meaning that we had basically a non-functional system. And it kind of sat waiting until we could get our new 3950X 16 core processor from AMD. Well, it's arrived, but we're not just pulling that apart to swap out GPUs and reinstall Windows because Windows is definitely to blame as well. DaVinci Resolve just doesn't run that great on the operating system. Scaling is a complete disaster. I know this is mostly Blackmagic's fault or editing applications fault, not Windows's fault because they do provide the API. But as Steve Ballmer once said, Developers, 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 developers. Developers are everything, and if, if they don't take advantage of the APIs provided by the OS, then you start to have issues. DaVinci Resolve doesn't respect Windows scaling, and so our UI was super tiny, and when we tried to forcibly scale it, it got super huge and pixelated. But that wasn't our only problem. Some of the video codecs we used weren't working very well on Windows, and our network card, remember we built that 336 terabyte server last year? Everything we edit is edited live over the network. We don't store anything on the computers, and it was having issues in Windows. That's a big problem. And stability is what we need over everything. It's one of the reasons why you'll see YouTubers and Hollywood studios blowing $50,000 on a Mac Pro. It's underpowered and overpriced by every measure because they need it to be stable and to them it's worth it. We don't really have the luxury of spending $50,000 and I already have a pretty awesome system that clearly isn't gonna run Windows. So what do I do? Well, Hackintosh isn't suitable. It's unreliable just as a Windows install is. I decided to run Linux. Now, why Linux, you wonder? Well, DaVinci Resolve was actually originally designed for Linux and then ported to Windows and Mac OS. There are several advantages to Linux, and I'm not gonna get into all of them, and I don't really wanna explain how Linux works because it gets really complicated, but in short, Linux is an operating system, just like Windows and Mac OS. But on top of that operating system, which is very bare bones, there are certain distributions. Some are created by companies, some cost money, some are free, some are open source. Uh, there are distributions of Linux everywhere. Now, DaVinci Resolve's distribution is called CentOS, and uh, it's pretty awesome in the sense that it's really stable, but they do it at the expense of security and not updating for four or five years at a time. The current version of DaVinci Resolve is uh, supported on a five-year-old OS only. That's not good for a brand new Ryzen computer, and that's not good for a computer that's gonna be accessing the internet. In Hollywood, it doesn't matter, because what computer is going to be accessing the internet with the new Avengers movie on it? None. And so that's fine for them, but for us, it's not gonna work. And so we need to run a version of Linux, a distribution of Linux that's a little more end-user friendly. The distribution that we've selected is based on Ubuntu, which is a Debian OS, and that OS is called Pop OS. Uh, Pop OS is cool for a number of reasons. It's very streamlined and doesn't have too much bloatware or crap in it, but it also comes with enough tools that people who are new-ish to Linux can use it reliably. So let's go ahead, boot this operating system, get it installed onto our SSD, and see if we can't get DaVinci Resolve working, because Linux is Linux is Linux, and so we should be able to. Okay, so that was actually pretty simple. We're booted into the OS, and it really does look pretty simple. If we open our kind of task switcher here, we can see our app page, and there's really not much in there. A couple office apps, utilities, uh, our uh, package installer, basically app store, uh, web browser, and a couple other things, but that's about it. 
And this is what's called a shell. Let me explain. You have Linux, which is the operating system, right? And then above that, you have your distributions, and those manage how items are held in, in Linux. And then on top of that, you have your GUI, your, your shell, your graphical user interface, and that's interacting with the actual operating system. Pop OS uses GNOME, which is used in Ubuntu and a lot of other Debian-based uh, Linux distros. Um, and it looks actually really great. Um, it's slick, looks nice. The, the problem with it is, and this is a pretty big issue, is that um, display scaling is terribly tiny. I mean, like, look at how tiny all the text elements and, and everything is here. It's unacceptably small. So we just scale up to 200% and we're good, right? So let's click apply and uh-oh. Now everything is monstrously huge. Uh, Windows, as we know, is terrible at scaling. That's one of the reasons I moved away from Resolve on Windows. Uh, Mac OS does it really, really nicely, and Linux is somewhere in the middle. You see, if this was a 27-inch display, a 200% scale would actually probably be awesome because your pixel density on a 4K monitor increases. But on this 32-inch display, everything is comically large. Luckily for us, in the most recent versions of GNOME, and of uh, Ubuntu, there is fractional scaling available. And what that means is if we go into the terminal and we enter a command line code, we can enable an experimental feature, so it's still in beta, which means it could theoretically be buggy, but I think it looks pretty good. We will open our settings window again. Oops, settings. And now you can see that we have 100, 125, 150, 175, and 200. So if we go to something like 125, that now must, looks much better. This is in a reasonable size. This is what I would use kind of on a regular desktop OS. Um, these icons are tiny, but they will scale up upon reboot. So this is much better. And now we can actually get to installing DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so we're right here on Blackmagic's website, DaVinci Resolve 16. I click download. There's a big Linux button right here. And uh, I say download oldie and that's it, right? It just downloads and installs. Uh, it's not quite that simple in Linux. You see, unlike Mac OS or Windows, which have a .exe or .dmg executable file, uh, Linux is a little differently. The download folder or the download file is specifically tailored to CentOS, uh, which again, we're not running for the variety of reasons I listed before. So what we have to do is recompile the app to make it compatible with Pop! OS, Ubuntu, and Debian, which is what we're running. Uh, this can be pretty tricky and lengthy of a process. It used to be less than ideal before this guy, Daniel Tuvesen, made his own utility called Make Resolve Deb. And in theory, this thing should be pretty awesome. All we have to do is run about four or five terminal commands. This utility that's pre-made will basically unpack this big zip folder that we've downloaded, and then reassemble it into a .deb package that can be installed on Pop! OS. And uh, then we should be able to manage it like any other app through our package management tool or our app store. So let's give it a shot and see if it works. And installation went without any issues, right? Well, almost. You see, when we were compiling the app, we did run into one error. The suggestion was to just delete the installer and then download it and try again. And we did, and the error went away. So problem solved. <laughs> but when we opened DaVinci Resolve, the UI was super, super tiny. It didn't seem to respect the fixes that we made from an OS level earlier. There's a reason why, which I'm not going to get into. But luckily, the good thing about Linux is if there's a problem, someone else has probably experienced it as well. And the community is really good at helping you out, which came in handy because when we tried to open the app and we got scared fixed, we found that the license key just didn't work. We were entering the right code. It works on our Mac and our PC. We knew it was correct. It turns out that there was some sort of validation issue because we weren't running CentOS. We were using a Debian based uh, uh, distro instead. And so I went online and one of the suggestions was that we just buy a DaVinci Resolve dongle. This ended up being okay because we're gonna run Resolve on two machines anyway and I only have one license. Uh, so I went out to my local camera store, purchased a USB dongle, and uh, it's a hardware dongle rather than activating through the internet. The Mac Pro, one of the reasons why there's a USB uh, slot inside is for that very purpose. Uh, there's a lot of pro apps that are kind of more legacy style that require a hardware dongle. And once we installed that, it worked great. But I didn't want a USB dongle hanging off the back of my computer, right? And so all I had to do was insert a PCIe to USB uh, card that I had purchased for my Mac Pro that didn't end up working. And there are a couple slots inside. So I popped the USB slot in or the, the activation dongle into one of those. And now I have uh, basically a computer that seems perfect because <laughs> you can't see the USB dongle at all. 
The one last issue we had was in Resolve, we opened it up and, and didn't have audio. But again, one quick Google away and things were fixed in two minutes. So how'd it turn out? Actually, shockingly well. It did take a little bit of time and effort getting things running, especially since I'm not too familiar with Linux. But now that it's up, it seems really stable, way more stable than Windows was already. And I think in many aspects, it's actually much quicker and better than Mac OS as well. Uh, pretty cool. I don't know that I'm switching to Linux as my main operating system anytime soon. But for a workstation edit rig like this, I think it's going to be stable and awesome for many months and years to come. Hopefully, we'll find out. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you didn't, well, that other button seems to work okay too. Don't worry, I'll get back to uh, uh, Pro Display XDR stand parody content too. But I just wanted to show you kind of some of the stuff that happens behind the scenes. As always, stay snazzy, and thank you so much for watching.